And so what we've got going here is exactly what this unit excels at. In today's video, we're going to be testing out this Yultra Portable Power Station from Marbero. I've already done some uh, testing on it, and uh, I'll give you a little spoiler alert. If you want a really lightweight, tiny, portable power solution that really excels at powering mobile devices that uh, are USB based in particular, uh, or even uh, 12 volt DC, this is the device for you. If you're looking for a device that uh, can provide major home backup to major appliances and what have you, this is definitely not the device for you. But I still go through all my uh, testing and uh, what have you that, uh, that I'm known for on this channel. And uh, you guys uh, will probably want to see that. So here we go. Now these guys did send this power station out to me free of charge for review and testing. That is all they did. I get to say and do whatever I want. Let's do a quick unboxing. So I've got some documentation here. Here's the power station. We've got a uh, 12 volt style car outlet to what appears to be a 5521 barrel plug. Plugs in like that. And we've got uh, a little power brick to charge from the AC wall. Something to note uh, here, and they've uh, got it in a couple of different places. I appreciate the uh, transparency and uh, clarity, but uh, note that the inverter on this, with being so tiny, uh, it's a modified sine wave inverter. So it's not a pure sine, so be sure and keep that uh, in mind as you're using this. Another thing uh, worth noting, and it's uh, also in the manual here, but uh, the DC output here is not regulated. It comes straight from the battery, and so it will fluctuate with the state of charge of the battery. DC solar charging voltage, and I doubt you can see this, but uh, it has a voltage range of 15 to 24 volts. It's a very narrow uh, range, and it only charges at 1.2 amps. So that's less than 30 watts. Now, this is a small um, little unit, so it doesn't need a ton of juice to, to charge it. But uh, anyway, just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, you can't go hog wild with the solar on this. Let's just uh, see what happens when we plug the uh, charger in. The uh, state of charge indicator blinks. This is the smallest power station that uh, these guys make. And they actually get bigger from here. So in the test you're about to see, you will see there's actually quite a bit of uh, restrictions as far as what this is capable of powering. That's because it's the smallest, lightest, most portable version that they have. But they have larger ones as well. So you know, do your research and what have you, and maybe at some point they'll uh, send me some of their larger products and I'll put it through the same test. 12 volt compressor fridge test. This is gonna be kind of a worst case scenario situation. I've got the cooler set to zero degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but I've got it on eco mode with low battery protection mode on so that it will run for as long as possible. And it's empty, okay? So not much uh, thermal mass. Your run times, if you've got it in fridge mode or with stuff inside of it, will probably be greater. But it's helpful to have a benchmark of kind of a worst case scenario. So that way you know that you know, you'll safely get uh, at least a little more run time. Uh, this right here is the stopwatch, and uh, the screen is off because I haven't uh, plugged this in, but uh, we've gotten it down to temperature, and uh, we'll just uh, let this go until we see the screens uh, shut off, and that'll give us an idea of run time. This power station did just get uh, charged up, so we are full. registering three degrees, but it is set for zero. Our ambient air temperature right now is 72.7. I just noticed uh, something important that uh, you guys want to know. 12 volt outlet comes straight from the battery. It is not regulated at all. So if you look here, uh, we're registering under load 15.8 volts. When I first plugged it in, we were up in the 16 range. 
Uh, so be careful because you need to be sure that your appliance, in the case of the cooler, it's good for 12 to 24 volts, but uh, make sure that your device is good for higher voltage than just 12 volts. The cooler just uh, shut off and I uh, paused the time. Four hours, 10 minutes, 45 seconds. That's not bad for a teeny 88 watt hour battery pack. We have depleted this battery down to zero. We've got that flashing light. Uh, the light won't even turn on on the end. So this is as dead as it gets. We're gonna do the uh, max recharge rate test and according to their Amazon page they're saying it will charge in approximately six hours let's see if that uh, is indeed the case we've got the light blinking there temperature does sometimes impact charging speeds uh, the room temperature is low 70s 72 at the moment So I missed when this uh, finished, but uh, I reviewed the footage of the time lapse and it only took three hours and 16 minutes. So basically half the time that uh, the manufacturer claimed it would take to charge. It makes me think maybe there's something strange going on. Let's check. So this is the power supply that puts 19 volts at 1500 milliamps. 1500 milliamps is 1.5 amps. 1.5 times 19 equals 28.5 times that by three. Okay, makes sense. If for some reason I didn't think uh, that it would be the uh, full capacity, but it uh, looks like the claims of it uh, being around uh, 84 watt hours uh, make sense, so. Just wanted to verify that. We've got a USB type C power delivery port. I've got another power station here. This has a bi-directional 100 watt type C port. So we're gonna see uh, how much power this can uh, push out. Obviously this will accept up to 100 watts. We should just be restricted by what this can do. I've got a cable here. This is uh, from MagTame. It's pretty cool. It's got uh, this magnetic, the entire cable's magnetic. So you guys may want to check that out. But anyway, this is a Thunderbolt capable. Plug this in, plug this in over here. Let's turn it on. Notice the wattage over here. So it looks like the power delivery can provide up to 18 watts. All right, similar test. We've got this other power station and uh, I've got the bi-directional USB C port being utilized, uh, but this goes to a type A. Now notice that uh, it is capable of USB 3.0 and uh, so we should be able to get the max power out of these ports. So let's see what uh, what happens with that. Looks like we can push about 17 watts through that. Now let's just uh, try one of the dinosaur style ports and uh, see what that uh, gives us. I'm pleasantly surprised. Uh, 14 watts, not bad. I wanna see what uh, happens with this uh, DC out. So it looks like we're substantially less than 100 watts. We're at uh, 43 to 44 watts coming out of the 12 volt outlet here. Next test, uh, let's see if uh, we can overload this inverter. Now it's a little challenging because this is a modified sine wave inverter and so uh, motors and that kind of thing uh, don't work very well. But uh, I think uh, going to a power brick where it just is gonna convert it to DC is probably a good approach. Uh, this power brick will put over 100 watts uh, worth of load on this. Inverter in here can supposedly support up to 120 watts for a period of time. Uh, however, it's only rated for 80 watts continuous. One, two, three. So nothing's blown up uh, or anything. And uh, we are over the, the limit, 94 watt. This is supposed to be able to run up to 120 watts for a short period of time. 
So uh, let's see what uh, how long we can run it for. Uh, it's currently 9.48 p.m. I don't think you'll be able to hear it. There is a little tiny fan in this to cool it down when uh, the inverter's under a heavy load. The fan has ramped up to its max speed, I think. It's very, very quiet. Let's see if we can hear it. Now we're talking. Gonna put a kilowatt meter on. Now, notice we've got uh, 113, 114 volts vacillating a little bit. 58 hertz. Let's plug the power station, this other one, back in. Back up in the 90 watt range. According to the kilowatt meter, we're actually uh, pulling uh, just over 100 watts. So our voltage has dropped substantially. We're down now to just 106 volts. 1.2 amps. Uh, be careful because this inverter isn't uh, very strong. So you're not going to get very good voltages. 10.02 and uh, it just kicked off after being on at over 100 watts. When I go to turn it on, the red uh, outlet flashes and then turns off. So I either blew it up or it's in like a thermal protection state. So let's give it uh, a minute to cool off here and uh, we'll see if it will come back to life. Hey, look at that. A few minutes later and uh, the inverter turned back on. Let's make sure we've got power. Yep. One of the best features of this power station is it's awesome light. It's a really nice diffused light and uh, this is the the corner of my kitchen with my table in it. That's on low. Let's uh, click it up. It's the next setting. And that's high. This would be invaluable for camping or something, or just, you know, to, to have during a power outage and it's nighttime and dark. This uh, is a very nice diffused light. I really, really like this light. The only thing that would make it better is if it didn't have the SOS. <laughs> Can this Marbero power station power a high-end gaming desktop PC? No, it cannot. Can the Marbero portable power supply run a hot plate? No, it cannot. Can this Marbero power supply run a full-size clothes washer and a full-size gas clothes dryer? No. Can the Marbero portable power supply run a full-size household vacuum cleaner? No. Can this power station run a full-size residential refrigerator? No. Can this Marbero portable power supply run a 120 volt mini split? No. Can this Marbera portable power supply run a full-size gas furnace? No. This is really what this power station excels at, and that is charging small electronic devices. So we've got uh, two different kinds of phones, a tablet, a laptop computer, and uh, then I've even got a bonus power station here that uh, is also going to play into the mix. Uh, what I want to see is what kind of output uh, this can support. I'm going to max this thing out on the DC side. So we're going to have every single USB port utilized. And then we're also going to utilize the 12 volt outlet as well. And uh, we're just going to see if it splits the power up evenly. If it uh, struggles uh, to do any of this, I don't know, let's see. Let's uh, plug this 12 volt in. Now this 12 volt is uh, going into this power station to charge it. So we should see some input here and uh, we are. 36, 37 watts is our baseline on the 12 volt. So let's see if that changes at all as we load this up. We're gonna unplug that. I have a USB-C, this is bi-directional charging into this. So we're going to charge from this to this. This can accept, this cable is a Thunderbolt cable and this unit can accept up to 100 watts. Uh, we're not going to get that. And uh, 18 is what we tested before. Now let's start plugging stuff in and uh, let's see if slash how 
that uh, might change if it starts sharing wattage between all of the USB ports, okay? So let's start with this. This uh, orange cord here is going to this phone and it's in one of the slow charge USB ports. We're still pushing 18 watts. Charging on the iPhone now. That's also plugged into one of the slow USB type A ports. And the USB-C is still producing 18 watts. So that's good. Which is gonna go to one of the quick charge USB type A ports. Still producing 18 watts, so that's good. Laptop computer going on another one of the type A quick charge ports. It's charging. All right, that uh, dropped us by two watts there for a second. Uh, but uh, still pushing pretty close to 18. This is gonna be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Let's put this uh, DC plug back in. All right, we were 36 watts before, and 36 plus 18 is uh, 54, so it's handling this like a champ. So it doesn't appear, <clears throat> at least as far as we can tell, that the USB-C and DC out are impacted at all by what's going on on the USB type A ports. You can easily max all of these ports out and it will run just great. And so what we've got going here is exactly what this unit excels at, charging your mobile devices on the go. That uh, concludes the testing. So as you saw, it uh, does a fantastic job powering and uh, charging your mobile electronic devices and uh, small things. It even did pretty good on the uh, cooler test, I'd say. You know, if you're just going on a quick picnic or something and uh, you just need to keep stuff cool for a few hours, the weight, the size, tossability of this is just can't be beat. As you also saw, it uh, is not a very strong inverter and the fact that it's a modified sine wave uh, also restricts it even further. And uh, so I, I don't put too much weight on that uh, AC capability. Nice to have it. Uh, generally for the type of stuff uh, it's designed to power, which again is the small stuff, this really can't be beat. I love how portable this is. Price, uh, I think, is is more than fair. At the time of filming this, it uh, is retailing for $99.21 with a $33 coupon. That uh, brings it down to similar, or in some cases less expensive, than some just plain USB power banks. And this gives you a lot of USB functionality with the added DC and the inverter. So, and let's not forget the light. <laughs> so I think uh, for what uh, what your money's buying, it's, uh, it's pretty darn good. Just uh, make sure that you're getting it for the right reasons. Don't get this for your whole home, you know, backup or your fridge or anything. It's not gonna work. This is just for your portable small electronics. Anyway, leave comments down below. I love hearing from you and uh, your thoughts and ideas. What uh, could a power that uh, I didn't necessarily show that could be a really good viable solution. I love hearing your thoughts and ideas. You guys have some great ideas and thoughts and uh, I try to read all of your comments and I try to respond to all of them if possible too. So anyway, I uh, love to hear from you. Drop those down below. I do this as a benefit to you guys. So the only compensation uh, I request is uh, to be sure and give me the like and uh, subscribe completely 100% free to you, but uh, benefits the channel tremendously. So I would appreciate that. We'll catch you all next time.